Friday, February 3rd. Last night, it occurred to me that Jenny might feel more comfortable sleeping in Anya's room rather than sharing with me. But when I mentioned it to her, she got all snotty about it. I thought you liked me. I do. I thought we were friends. We are. It's just... Just... Just what? Well, you're a girl. So? And I'm a boy. So? I sighed. All I meant was, I don't like Anya. Why not? She's scary. She sticks her nose up. That's just her way. It doesn't mean anything. I don't like her. I'm sure she's all right. Why don't you sleep in her room then? Very funny. Jenny grinned. And that was that. There were no more surprises when the lift came down this morning. Just a shopping bag full of food. No aspirins, no bandages, no cigarettes. Me and Jenny put the food away and started making breakfast. Then Anya came in. No makeup, bleary eyes, crumpled clothes. She looked tired and fragile, and somehow that made her seem more approachable. Or so I thought. Morning, I said. What? Good morning. She just glared at me. Any cigarettes? I'm afraid not. Shit, she hissed. Shit. She turned around and stomped out. I looked at Jenny. Jenny shrugged. We got on with breakfast, eating silently, like a couple of kids whose mum is in a really bad mood. When Anya stomped back in again to get a drink of water, muttering more curses under her breath, I sneaked a glance across the table at Jenny and saw her looking back at me with smug glint in her eye, as if to say, See? What did I tell you? She's scary. Just so you know, this is where everyone is. Notice anything odd about that? Maybe it's just a coincidence, but... Apart from me and Jenny, it seems like we're all trying to keep as far away from each other as possible. Which is kind of strange, don't you think? I mean, here we are, stuck together in this hellish situation, desperate to find a way out, and we're behaving like strangers on a bus. Or maybe it's not so strange after all? It's just what people do, I suppose. After breakfast, I went to see how Fred was doing. There was no answer when I knocked on his door. I knocked again and put my ear to the door. Nothing. I called out his name, knocked again, then opened the door and looked in. He was lying on the bed, curled up into a ball, wearing nothing but a pair of shorts. The bedclothes were all thrown on the floor, and I could see scars and tattoos all over his body, needle tracks on his arms and legs. He's got a lot of scars. He had the pillow clamped over his head, and he was sweating like mad and moaning like a baby. Heroin withdrawal. Even with his legs all scrunched up, the bed's far too small for him. He must be at least six feet four. How's it going? I asked him. Uh, he replied. Do you want some tea? Uh, we didn't get any aspirin. You'll have to stick it out. Ugh. I'll bring you some tea. On the way back to the kitchen, I passed Anya's room. The door was open, and I could see her sitting on the bed with her legs crossed and her arms held tightly across her chest. Jenny's right about her. She is scary. Beautiful, but scary. She has that overbearing confidence that comes from wealth and good looks. You want something to eat? I asked her. Her head snapped around at the sound of my voice. What? Would you like anything to eat? How long are we going to be here? I have no idea. She flicked at her hair. It's unbearable. She started jiggling her foot up and down, then turned and looked at me. A good, long look, up and down, checking me out like I was a piece of furniture or something. Finally, she blinked, wrinkled her nose, and looked away. What are the police doing about Jenny? I asked her. What? I sighed. What did they say on the news about Jenny? Jenny who? I glared at her. Oh, right, she said. The girl. She shrugged. I think there was one of those appeals on TV, you know, a press conference with her parents and everything. And there's been lots of coverage about her in the newspapers. Lots of photographs, that kind of thing. Do the police have any leads? Anya shrugged again. How should I know? Did they say they had any leads? I haven't really been following the story, to be honest. I'm very busy at the moment. I don't have time to... You need to get your head out of your arse, I said. Excuse me? You heard me. Stop feeling sorry for yourself, for Christ's sake. She gave me a nasty look. You could try talking to Jenny for a start, I went on. I know it's hard, but pretend you've got a heart. She shook her head. I don't have to listen to this. I shrugged. What do you know anyway, she sneered. How old are you? Old enough. That was supposed to sound cool, but it probably didn't. Her foot was jiggling around at 60 miles an hour. 
I said, you should have gone while it was dark. I'm sorry? The toilet. I told you last night. You should have gone while it was dark. She uncrossed her legs, brushed out her knee, flicked out something on her shoe, then recrossed her legs. I said, do you want me to go with you? What? God, no. I won't look. I'll stand in front of you, facing away so the camera won't see anything. Her mouth tightened. She chewed her lip, stared hard at me, then looked away. The room was quiet. I gave it a minute, then turned to leave. At the door, I heard a little sob. I turned around. Anya's head was bowed down, and her voice was trembling. Why is he doing this? She wept. What have I done? I don't deserve this. It's not fair. Fair doesn't come into it. Tears rolled down her cheeks. I said, I'll be in the kitchen if you need me. The summer before I ran away was a hot one. Long, hot, tedious. Dad wasn't home very much, as usual, and I spent most of the school holidays either trapezing around the world with him, staying in hotels in soulless apartments, or, when he got fed up with me cramping his style, staying with various friends and relatives, most of whom I neither knew nor liked. I didn't actually get to spend any time at home with Dad until the week before I was due back at school, and even then, all we did was argue about stuff all the time. Mostly the same old stuff. I don't see why I have to go to a boarding school, Dad. Why can't I just go to a normal school? A local school? <sighs> you know why, Linus? We've already been through this a million times. Yeah, but just give it another year, okay? Once I've got all these projects sorted out, I won't have to keep traveling so much. And then, you said that last year. I know, but and the year before? Things are different now, I promise. This time next year, everything will be okay. That's when I decided it was time to go. 11.55 p.m. I only wrote a short shopping list tonight. We've got enough food for tomorrow, so all I asked for was some clean clothes and something to read. I didn't bother asking the others if they wanted anything. I'm getting a bit sick of being mother. They know how it works. If they want something, they can ask for it themselves. After I'd put the note in the lift, I stared in there for a while, staring up at the camera. I knew it was pointless, but I did it anyways. I was feeling all gripey and irritable. And I couldn't think of anything else to do, so I just stood there, staring up at the camera, waiting to see what happened. Nine o'clock came and went, and the lift didn't move. Go on, I said to the ceiling. Beam me up. I promise I won't do anything. I just want to see you. Have a little chat. Nothing happened. I smiled. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Nothing. I waited another minute, then sighed and stepped out. As soon as I cleared the door, the lift started to hum, and I immediately jumped back in. It stopped humming. I looked at the ceiling. I suppose if I push this too far, you're going to do something unpleasant, aren't you? The silence was beginning to annoy me. All right, I said, stepping out. I'll catch you later. As I walked down the corridor, I heard the lift start up. The door closed, the hum hummed, and the lift went up. I went to the bathroom, ran a cold bath, and got in fully dressed. Now it's nearly lights out time. My clothes are still soaking wet, and I'm lying under a blanket, shivering. I think he's turned the heating down vindictive bastard. At least I'm clean. Jenny's been quiet all night. Anya hasn't shown her face since this morning. Fred's making the occasional howling noise. I've had an idea about the camera in the bathroom.